the topic for today's lecture is rolling rolling motion we all use wheels we say two wheeler four wheeler our bicycles motor bike trains they all have wheels wheel is very very important what is so special about wheel the wheel when it uh, moves on a road its motion is rolling motion and that is why it is important so what happens if you look at cross section the road is uh, like this and then the wheel is like this it has a circular cross section and then the wheel rotates as well as it moves so the wheel rotates as well as it moves in the forward direction so if you consider a spoke of this wheel here this particular spoke after some time you will find that the wheel is here the wheel is here and this spoke has gone to some other place so this is rotation the spoke was vertical and now it is making some angle with the vertical so that is rotation and then it has moved in the forward direction so that is the translation so it moves in forward direction as well as it rotates so that is how the motion goes and then uh, this uh, rotation and this translation they are related by a very very special equation and that is that uh, ensures at this contact the surfaces are not slipping over each other so the velocity of this upper surface and velocity of this lower surface must be same in the same direction so that there is no slipping here that is the meaning of rolling motion or definition of rolling motion if it represents a road which is at rest then uh, this point of the wheel must be at rest the wheel is going ahead the wheel is rotating but this point must remain at rest there should be no slipping between this uh, surface and this surface now let's do an experiment on rolling i have a cylinder a cylindrical tube in fact the surface is cylindrical and then the stable surface is uh, horizontal flat and i can put it here and then i can move it i can roll this tube in such a fashion that uh, there is no slipping between this stable surface and the surface of the tube in contact it doesn't rub it like this or it doesn't rub it like this it gently goes and the lower portion remains at rest so this is rolling this is rolling if i press it with this scale i am pressing this upper surface with this scale and gently pushing it in forward direction so that the tube is rotating and going ahead and uh, the upper surface is definitely moving in forward direction and the scale is also moving in forward direction you can see and there is no slipping between the scale and the tube it's not rubbing like this or it's not rubbing like this so here these two velocities are same the velocity of the topmost point and this uh, plastic scale they are same so this tube is rolling on both the surfaces the surface of the table as well as the surface of the scale now my experiment is this i keep it here and place this uh, scale here the zero of this uh, scale is right at the top of this uh, tube i very gently push it forward so that there is no slipping between the scale and the tube 
and of course there is no slipping between the tube and the table and let me do it for this much time so that the other end of the scale is now at the top surface. So, here so how much has the tube moved in the forward direction and how much has the scale moved in the forward direction. So, the scale is the, the front edge of the scale has reached here and that this is this tube the center of the tube has reached here and when we started the motion we started when both of these the front edge of this scale and this center of the tube they were here at this edge. So, how much has the scale moved and how much has the tube moved in forward direction. So, you can measure first tube you see is just one scale length of one scale it starts from here and the tube reached here. So, it is 30 centimeters length of this scale and then from this point to that point if you see it is yet another 30 centimeters it is it is yet another 30 meter centimeters. So, the front of the scale or the entire scale has moved through 60 centimeters, but the tube has moved through 30 centimeters. The center of this tube that or the axis of the tube that has moved only 30 centimeters, but the scale has moved 60 centimeters, but the velocity of the scale is same at any instant at any instant velocity of the scale is same as the velocity of this top surface because there was no slipping at the top surface also. So, the velocity of this top surface which is also the velocity of the scale must be double of the velocity of this axis right because the scales velocity is two times the centers velocity and the scale velocity is same as the velocity of this top surface. So, in this condition if this uh, center is moving with some velocity say v c v center then at this time this top is moving with a velocity which is 2 times v c. So, this is moving with velocity v v c and this is moving with a velocity 2 times v c whichever point is at the top and at a given instant that must move with this velocity. In fact, uh, you can generalize uh, you can always say that uh, what is omega here this angle which has been rotated in some time. So, omega is delta theta over delta t that is omega and you take any point on this uh, uh, object any point anywhere on this object and you can call this as this vector as r vector this vector as r vector and then the velocity of this is like omega cross r and omega is remember if it is going this way omega is in the uh, inside the board. So, this will be perpendicular to this line and its magnitude will be omega into r. So, here here this r is 2 times the radius for this point this r is 2 times the radius. So, it is omega times 2 r whereas, for the center this is only r. So, it is omega times r this velocity is omega times r and this velocity is omega times 2 r and therefore, velocity of the topmost point is double velocity of the center. In fact, you can do this experiment in a very simple manner you really do not need the table and the scale and all that use your two hands. So, if I place this uh, cylindrical object here at this uh, uh, this place on my palm 
and place the other hand like this. So, look at the motion of this finger which is in contact with the top surface and I will not allow it to slip like this okay? and I will roll this uh, tube on my left hand and also on the on the uh, right hand also. So, look at the motion of the tube and motion of my fingers these fingers which are at the in which are in contact with the top surface. So, how much has the tube moved? The tube started from here and it reached here. So, the length moved by the tube is this much length of this palm and how much these fingers have moved? The fingers started from here, the fingers started from here and where are the fingers now? The fingers have gone here and it is just length of two palms, one palm is here and one palm is here. So, the distance covered by these fingers is double the distance covered by the center or the axis of the tube and that shows that the top surface has double the velocity than the uh, axis points. So, in our next experiment, I will be looking at the motion of uh, balls, spherical balls or maybe some other shapes on an inclined plane. So, to start with I have this steel ball and if I place this steel ball here it rolls and goes down this track. This track is uh, as you see it is a PVC channel which is used by electricians roughly it is a plane uh, some deviation because its own weight, but uh, you can ignore that it is roughly a plane. And on this plane, if I place this uh, ball, this ball rolls and comes down. So, I will place these two, this uh, steel ball and this uh, glass ball, they are of different materials, different size. I will place them here. So, they are placed at the same height and then I will release them by lifting this scale and see what happens. So, they go together this time a bigger ball bigger steel ball and that a glass ball. So, we place them here and then release and see what happens. even now it goes together. So, it does not depend on uh, the nature of the ball, it does not depend on the size of the ball, whether it is glass, whether it is steel, whether it is smaller, whether it is larger. In all cases, the balls roll at the same speed with the same acceleration. So, it does not depend on mu, it does not depend on r. So, let us try to understand why this uh, time taken by the balls to cover that length of the inclined plane does not depend on size of the ball or mass of the ball or uh, material of the ball, friction coefficient between the ball and the track. So, let us do some analysis and try to understand that. So, suppose you have this uh, inclined plane and this angle with the horizontal is theta and the ball you release from some point and this ball rolls on this inclined plane. So, let us see what are the forces on this ball. The forces will be weight, you can write mg and the normal force from here from the contact that will be normal force here and then you will have friction by this track. 
So, you will have some frictional force which is parallel to the surface f, small f. That is all. So, if I write the equation for translation in the direction of the track, the, the net resultant force will be m g sin theta and minus this friction. That will be mass times acceleration of the center. This is the acceleration of this uh, center of the ball and therefore, this will decide how much time it will take to come from here to here. Distance is half a t square. But then what is this f? What is this f? To get that, you have to also look at this angular acceleration or angular motion and consider the torque about this center of the ball. So, the torque of m g will be 0 because it will be passing through this center. The torque, you know, the torque is defined as r cross f. and this r is the position vector of the point where the force is applied with respect to the point about which the torque is being taken. So, I am taking the torque about this center and then the force is applied at the center therefore, this r is 0 and the torque is 0 and same is true for this n. So, this torque is also 0. Then this small f this frictional force remains and because of this the force is applied here. So, this will be the r vector this will be the r vector this r vector and this will be the f vector. So, you can see what is r cross f this will be the radius r and times this friction. So, f into r So this is the torque and that will be equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration in this scenario is it is not always true we will talk about that also torque is i times alpha is not always true, but in this scenario it is it is there. So, the torque is this and the moment of inertia moment of inertia of this spherical ball about this diameter this diameter here and that will be 2 by 5 m r square. So, that is moment of inertia and times acceleration and you can cancel 1 r from the both sides. So, this is 2 by 5 m into r and alpha and alpha will be this a c divided by r. This is a condition for no slipping alpha is equal to a c by r that is the condition for no slipping angular velocity is equal to linear velocity divided by r that is the condition for no slipping. And so, this is 2 by 5 times mass and then acceleration c and this f you can put here. So, m g sin theta and minus 2 by 5 m a c that is m a c. So, m cancels out everywhere g sin theta is equal to this 2 by 5 a c you can add here. So, that will become 5 by 7 by 5 a c and hence the acceleration is 5 by 7 times g sin theta. Now, you can see you do not have mass appearing in this equation, you do not have radius appearing in this equation and you do not have friction coefficient appearing in this equation. So, the acceleration of the center with which the entire ball seems to come down that is independent of the nature of the surface whether it is steel ball or it is glass ball, whether it is a bigger ball, whether it is a smaller ball. 
so uh, heavy ball light ball it is independent of all those things and therefore it takes the same time now let me do the same experiment with two different shapes one object is disk type and another object is ball type spherical ball type and what i will do is i will put this uh, disk here and ball here so disk is at front ball is at rear and i release it from this position so you see they have gone at the same speed have they gone with the same speed really if i put the ball ahead and the disk on the rear see what happens so you can see the separation the ball is moving faster and the disk is moving slower if the ball is uh, in the rear and the disk is in the front and ball tries to move faster and the disk is not moving that fast they go together but if the ball is on the front then you can see the separation now it is your task to do a similar analysis with the disk type object and come out with the acceleration compare with this expression written here on the board and verify whether it is as it should be whether the ball must have larger acceleration than the disk as we have seen here or it is something else